Bonjour, hi! Welcome or welcome back to another video. Happy Monday! But if you're listening or watching to this on not a Monday, happy day! I don't know, it just made sense to me to start with happy Monday because this is a Monday reset, so it only made sense, but I'm realizing now that it might not be Monday when you're watching this. Anyway, <laughs> I already told you that, but I do not like gatekeeping. So today I'm here to share with you all the tips and tricks and hacks on how to start your week productively and how to have a proper Monday reset. So without further ado, let's jump into it. First things first, you have to see Monday as a fresh start. It is the first day of the week. So it is the day that sets the tone for your entire week. So if you start Monday on a strong note, then the rest of the week can only go as well as the start of it. And so with that in mind, Monday becomes a day where you set intentions for yourself, where you set goals for yourself, and where you just give yourself the time to start everything accordingly so that the rest of your week goes smoothly and you don't have to worry about anything. And all of that leads me to habit number two, which is creating a realistic to-do list, emphasis on the realistic part. I know how overwhelming it can be to create a to-do list for the entire week and to have every little task that you want to do for the week, but personally it helps me to see everything that I have to do and it helps me to plan accordingly. And obviously here I'm not necessarily talking about like tasks such as making your bed or cooking dinner, but I'm talking about the tasks that need maybe a little bit more attention and that need to be planned ahead because you want to get them done, which is the purpose of a to-do list, but you get the point. And it might be because I'm a sucker for planning and organization in general, but creating this to-do list and then being able to tick all the boxes at the end of the week just makes me feel so accomplished and satisfied that, I don't know, I, it's, it's this little part of my week that I really like to do just because I am a visual person. So as I said, having all the lists in front of me makes it a little bit more tangible. And because I wrote it down, it makes me also more accountable. So I have to do them because I want to tick the boxes. Yeah, I know my brain works in this funny way, but hey, this is what works for me. So it might be what would work for you too. Speaking of organization, number three is planning. It might sound a little bit repetitive to creating a to-do list, but now it's actually taking that to-do list and planning when and how you're going to do these tasks. So what I like doing every single Monday is I sit down in front of my computer, I have my to-do list with me, I have my calendar, and then I will take every task on the list and I will put it in my calendar and I will plan time for every little task. I do this for all of the personal things I have to do, but I also do this for work. So my calendar looks pretty filled, but it's just time that I plan for myself to accomplish certain things. Sometimes it'll be a little bit more precise and I'll allow myself some time for a specific task. For example, creating a brief for a client. And then other times it might be a little bit more vague and I will just like allow myself, let's say two hours for this specific client, but the task in itself isn't really precise. I'm just blocking this time in my schedule for this client, but whatever needs to be done will get done at that time. So I do this for work, but I also do this for personal stuff such as going to the gym, going to the grocery store, creating content, reading, yoga, whatever I want to plan ahead in my week, I take this time to plan. And so I have a rundown of how my week is going to go. And so I can only follow this schedule. Does that make sense? And so similarly to creating a to-do list, having a plan and a schedule for my entire week makes me a little bit more accountable. And because I wrote it down, I'm more likely to accomplish these tasks and to do everything when I actually plan on doing them. So it is my little hack for you right there. It's no secret that I love having a routine, especially when it comes to starting my day or my week on the right foot. I used to be a big procrastinator, especially in the morning, and I would just wait for time to go by and then feel the pressure to get 
things done. So having a routine and more specifically a morning routine has been a game changer for me because now this is the time that I take to start the day and the week on solid foundations. I take this time to get ready and plan ahead. This is also the time that I take to fuel my mind, fuel my body so I feel more energized. And speaking of feeling energized, I've been adding Magic Mind to my morning routines for the past couple of weeks and it has upgraded my whole routine. I feel more focused and productive and I don't feel the urge to scroll on my phone endlessly anymore because this little bottle here contains nootropics that help with procrastination, focus, and clarity. So a special thank you to Magic Mind for partnering with me once again for today's video and for helping me to make my weeks more productive. I've briefly mentioned this, but moving your body is so important for energy and productivity. Planning on when you're going to go to the gym or when you're going to go on a walk or do yoga is important, but you actually have to get moving. So personally, I've been really enjoying to actually go to the gym or do something, just move my body on Monday, because if I do so, that I'm just, again, more likely to continue on doing it for the rest of the week. And yes, this is about the intention and holding yourself accountable and actually getting going, but it's also about the actual exercise because exercising and moving your body just releases some type of hormones that afterwards help you to stay more focused and be more productive and just be more grounded. In fact, studies have shown that an increase in physical activity improves energy levels, sleep quality, which ultimately affect productivity. So moving your body will not only make you feel better physically, but mentally as well. Speaking of mental health, we're jumping into number six, which is social media detox. I know how hard this can be, so it doesn't have to be super drastic where you cut off social media for a whole 24 hours or for a, a whole entire week, but it can be as simple as putting your phone on do not disturb when you're working, for example, or limiting your overall screen time or limiting your access to certain apps during certain times of the day. You can go whichever route with this and you can ease into it. Um, but I've just found that being distracted by social media puts me in this state of mind where I feel more anxious, where I compare myself and where, I don't know, I feel like it just makes me procrastinate more and it makes me not feel as good about myself. And so I tend to postpone what I want to do and I tend to feel like I don't know it just scrolling endlessly on social media has not been beneficial for me and if it, it affects my overall being but if it affects also my productivity because I'm just like scrolling endlessly and the way that social medias are made they're made to do just that they are made to hook you and to make you scroll for hours and that's not good when you want to get things done so Having a little social media detox, which whichever the form might be, can only be beneficial if you want to start your week positively. The same way social media can affect your productivity and your mental health, I think that your environment plays a lot into how you're feeling and how you're getting things done. So number seven is all about setting the mood and creating this bubble, this environment that will make you more likely to get things done. During the past weeks and even the past months, I've observed that my environment affects so much of the way that I do things. When my environment is messy, I tend to feel like overwhelmed, overstimulated. Whereas when everything is clean, when there's good music, when it smells good, I'm just feeling better. And so everything that I do seems better, if that makes sense. So set the mood and the environment for what's going to be good for you, what's going to put you in this mental and physical space to get things going or just like to feel good about yourself. That might be lighting up a candle, putting on your favorite playlist, dancing around, or maybe that's a five minute meditation with essential oils or like incense. I don't know. Find whatever works for you and whatever helps you to get in the good vibrations and do it. It's as simple as that. And it's all about the little things that make a big difference in the long run. So lighting up a candle itself might not make you feel more productive, but if you light up a candle and then you put on a playlist, you put on a nice outfit, just like these little things adding up will make you more likely to get things done because you're feeling good. So in my head, positivity and productivity are related. If you're feeling good, if you're feeling positive, then you are probably a little more likely to get things done and to, I don't know, be in the heat of the moment and being in this momentum and getting things done because you are feeling good. And then doing them will make you feel even better. 
and then feeling even better is going to help you achieve other things. It's like a cycle. So, and again, speaking of feeling good and feeling satisfaction, I have this little hack at number eight, which is rewards. That's right. I'm a big fan of treating myself and rewarding myself. So what I will do is I will set up these little goals and then once in a while when I've accomplished a milestone, let's say, I will go and reward myself with a cup of coffee or I will go on a coffee run or maybe a matcha run or I will go and buy myself, I don't know, I this makeup item that I've been wanting for a while. So it's not, it doesn't have to be super big, but it's creating this little reward and it's giving a purpose to what you're doing. It might sound a little materialistic, but if it's, if this is what works for you, then so be it. It, it is what works for me. I like creating rewards and it, they don't have to be big. Sometimes it's literally just going on a walk and treating myself to a little coffee or a little hot chocolate or a matcha or a kombucha. I like drinks. I think <laughs> I think drinks are often my rewards, but it can be as dumb as like a chocolate bar. Again, it doesn't have to be big, but it's it's about like that little treat. It's about treating yourself and it's about rewarding yourself for all the effort that you've put into, you know? Remember how I've talked about routines and like more specifically morning routine? Well, having a night routine is just as important as your morning routine. I used to not care so much about having a night routine and then I would just like do whatever and then go to bed when I would feel tired. But ever since I've created this night routine for myself, I have noticed a drastic change in the way that I feel and the way that I'm getting things done in the week. Not just that day, but for the entire week. And now that I have this night routine, I see it not only as like my cool down moment, but I see it as a closing shift, if that makes sense. So my night routine becomes two things. The first one is the closing shift. So the same way you would close a store and you would do all these little tasks so the person who opens up the next morning isn't frustrated with you, aka me, because I'm the one opening the next morning. Anyway, it's about these little things that will make the next day just a little bit better and a little bit more easy. And the second thing is this cool down moment. So I allow myself every single night to just chill and cool down. It doesn't have to be like chilling for two hours, but it's doing my skincare mindfully, reading, doing some journaling and being distraction free. I've talked about this in my 6 a.m. morning routine and I've talked about this in 10 habits that have genuinely changed my life, but especially at night, limiting my screen time and muting social media has been a game changer because that way I don't feel overwhelmed and I don't feel overstimulated with everything that I see on social media and I feel just more at peace more relaxed and it helps me to have better sleep quality at night. So having a night routine is crucial when it comes to productivity and when it comes to just overall your well-being. And finally, last but not least, it's all about creating a sleep schedule. This might sound a little childish, but the same way that having a night routine is important, having a sleep schedule is crucial. I know so many people and I used to be that kind of person who would neglect their sleep schedule, I would just be like, yeah, whatever, it's okay if I only have like six hours of sleep that night. But no, because it affects my energy level the day after and even the following days. So having a sleep schedule and going to bed at a certain time every single day is, honestly, it affects so many things in my life but it directly affects my productivity and my happiness. I'm a heavy sleeper. I'm a big sleeper. I love my sleep. So I know that I need at least seven hours of sleep. If I can get nine, it's even better. So knowing that, I actively know when I should go to bed in order to feel better the next morning, depending on, obviously, when I'm going to wake up. But a good night's sleep is so important for many things, not only for productivity. I know that here we're talking about productivity, but just your health in general, ugh, too many people neglect their sleep and it's, it shouldn't be that way. Everyone should allow themselves to get the sleep that they want, that they need and that they deserve. When you're sleeping, your body is literally regenerating itself. Like you need that time to reset your whole body and your whole mind. It's not only about the Monday reset, it's about your physical and mental reset. Like the amount of things that happen when you're sleeping 
It's important. So if you neglect that and if you don't get as much sleep as you need, you will feel it everywhere in your body and in your head. You will feel it here. You will feel it everywhere. I said that already, but you get the point. So if I wasn't clear enough, listen up, create yourself a sleeping schedule and thank me later. So that was it, my friends. Those were my 10 habits, tips, and tricks for a successful Monday reset and on how to start your week productively. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do share with me if you have any other tips and tricks that you do to get going on Mondays and to start your week on the right foot because you know what? Sharing is caring. And if we can share some knowledge, then even better. (laughs) And on that note, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me. I truly, truly, truly mean it. Hopefully, I have made a little difference in your day today. If you would like to make a difference in mine, you know what to do. And I'm going to wish you a happy Monday. Happy Monday Reset. And in Bunjil Nee.